Hey friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to this tutorial on how to cut out stencil material using the Brothers Scan and Cut. This is video one in a series I'm calling Back to School with the Brothers Scan and Cut. Let's get started. I'm using a standard mat for this tutorial. Not very sticky, but you know the drill. We try to restick it as much as we can. I'm using stencil material, okay? It is plastic material. I got it on Amazon. It comes in a sort of nondescript little bag without even a brand name, and it said made in China, okay? So it just comes in a bag, and I believe there were 12 in the bag, and I've already used a few of these, okay? I have other stencil material I use as well, but I really like this stuff because it's really thick. So what I'm doing now is I have a, I don't have a new mat, but I have a new, newly, I just restuck my mat. So it has a little bit of sticky to it because I just put some sticky on it. Okay, and I'm going to put this stencil onto my mat. And it, luckily plastic, and whenever you have plastic, it sticks better than paper. So I don't really have a problem this time with the stickiness. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load my mat. Okay, and now we're gonna design a stencil. We're gonna design an apple stencil. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the building patterns and we're gonna go to this second one and we're gonna select the second one again, which is the food groups. Now we're gonna put, we're gonna select the apple and we're gonna leave the default settings because this is not about resizing, this tutorial is about making stencils. So let's use the default size, put the apple on the, on the mat and we're gonna say set. Now we need to go get the other part of the apple. I don't like that both pieces don't just go on the mat at once, but brother must think, you know, hey, we're cutting in two different colors. We don't want them on the mat at the same time, but I happen to want them on the mat at the same time. So next we're gonna move those out of the way. We have two parts of the apple because we need, whenever you make a stencil, you need to have a border around your stencil. Here's what I mean. Let me put, I have to put something behind it so you can see it. Here's what I mean. You have a stencil. You need a border. Why? Because for students, teachers, crafters, you need to be able to, if you're going to be doing some inking or sponging, you need to cover up the area, protect the area that you're, mas that you're masking off, okay? In your stencil. Also, if you're trying to draw, you need something to hold on to. If you're trying to trace, okay? So that's why you need to have a little border around your stencil. Always make a border. I, I suggest, you know, about an inch on each side. I like to use round corners on my borders because then no students will get cut. You know, it, it's very safe. Okay? So let's do that. Let's make, let's go add. I'm going to say add. And we're going to go to pattern. Back to pattern. And we're going to do the first one, which is the shapes. And now we're going to pick the second one, B A A O O 2. It has some rounded corners. And for this tutorial, we're gonna make a box with a rounded corner, a square, five inches. And say set. Very important when you're cutting stencils is to you to move it away from the side because it does if you cut too close to the side, because this material is not quite 12 by 12, it will get caught and then you have a little bit of your stencil cut off. So I'm just moving it away from the side. That should help. And then um, let's Let's see if we can't group the apple together. Sometimes it lets me, sometimes it doesn't. I'm gonna move the apple. And I'm gonna go over here to this editing mode. And I'm using this four-way arrows because it'll let me nudge. It'll let me nudge the apple to the point where it's almost just touching the top part. Sometimes it lets me group, sometimes not. So. It's like, I'm going to select a certain area of the screen. I'm selecting just that. I'm going to say, okay. Now, I want to try to group these two. And I'm going to try to do it with this button. And it let me. Yay! Sometimes it does. Sometimes I have to do some more nudging. Yay, we have a grouped apple. It's okay that there's a little spot between. I want to group it, but I do want to leave that little bit of edge if I can. Because that makes it nice when it separates your colors when you're coloring it in. Move your apple on top of your box. You can center it using the grouping and centering tools, but I think it's just nice to eyeball it. It'd be fine. I'm happy with this design. I'm happy with the stencil. 
I'm going to say okay. Oh, before I say okay, sorry, B be sure to save your project before you cut. If you don't, when you're all done cutting, it'll disappear off your screen, kind of without a trace. So go ahead and say save and put it on your machine. And don't worry about that. It says it includes a group pattern, cannot ungroup. Well, you don't need to ungroup. So just say okay. It says you can't ungroup after you save. We don't want to ungroup after we save. In fact, that's the whole point of saving is to keep our group together. So let's say okay and let's cut this apple. Now, very important. For this particular tutorial, and I'm not going to use this every time in the series, but you are not using this. This is your standard cutting blade. I, have, I happen to be using Scan and Cut 2 CM350 model. Okay, we're not using this one. We are using this one. This is the deep cut blade. And I will also have a link to the exact one beneath. Now, when you order this, this blade, it does not come, I mean, blade holder. This is the deep cut blade holder, I should say. It doesn't even come with a blade. So you're like, well, what the heck? So be sure to order your blade. It's not too expensive, but be sure to get a blade. And to install your blade, you just take your blade out of its little holder and stick it in. Stick it right in. That's all. Plop, plop. Oh, wait. I got I have my glasses on. Here we go. See? There's a little magnet in there, so it'll hold it. It'll, it'll hold it in place. And then you're going to screw on your blade holder. And now we're using the deep cut blade. And go ahead and I always go all the way over and then back to four is what we're using. Okay, if you want to pause the video, write down the settings. If you want to follow along, I'm using a blade depth of four using the deep cut blade holder. Okay, now putting that in its holder. See what I did? I just plunked, let me just show you that in case. I don't want you to miss any steps. That's it, you just drop it in there, very easy. There you go, shut it, okay? Very easy. Now, back to this. We have a couple more settings that I have been messing with, experimenting with, I wanna tell you about. Go to your little wrench and go to page two. I am using a cutting speed of two and I'm using a cutting pressure of three. The cutting speed is good to always slow down. You could even go slower, but definitely don't go higher because your blade gets caught in this vinyl very easily, especially when you cut small things like I'll show you later. So be sure to use a slow cutting speed. And pressure, I just, I tried three and it worked and I didn't need to go up from there. So I'm using a cutting speed of two, a cut, cut pressure of three, and all the other settings are the same and I didn't change anything else except the blade depth, cut speed, and cut pressure. In the description of this video, I will have all of that written out. Let's go ahead and cut and we're gonna start. It's only gonna take a minute. And as you know, I like to just sort of Give my little brother's can and cut her a little rub while it's cutting because I do not want this vinyl, uh, not vinyl, we've done a vinyl on a different tour. Do not want this stencil material to pop up, pop up. So I'm just sort of pepping it. <laughs> Please don't come off the mat. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna pull this back. I don't want you to miss any steps, crafty friends. Okay, unload the mat. And there we have our stencil, we have our outline. Okay, we have our, let me just put that on a different background. And I'll tell you some more tips and I'm gonna show you some samples. All right, so here we have our, our stencil. It came out perfect. And we have our, this is important. We have our apple piece in the middle and we have this piece. Okay, why is this important? Because when you're crafting, or you're having the, even the students do things, you can cover up, and, and I like to do sponging, that's how I colored all the samples I'm gonna show you. Okay, I like to cover up the piece I'm not using. So for example, I'm coloring in the red. And when I color in the red, I cover it up the green. When I color in the green, I cover up the red. That way when I'm sponging, I'm not messing with the other section. So save these is my point, save them. I mean, especially for crafters. Now for kids, you don't, might not need to save them because they might just be, tracing these stencils. It depends on what you're having them do. Okay, so um, this is a smaller one. I'm using, just to let you know for the sample, I'm using Whisper White cardstock by Stampin' Up. It's just a regular card mat. And I did the, I used the drawing tool inside the brother. This is back to school is one of the logos or one of the text in, built into the machine. And I used Lemon Lime Twist for the, 
for the stem. Okay, so lemon lime twist, real red. Real red is the bottom. Okay, that's how I made this sample. I'm gonna show you some more samples. I hope your wheels are spinning. I did, this is another one that's built into the machine. I did a seashell. This is powder pink and berry burst on whisper white cardstock. Again, that's a built-in pattern. Another built-in pattern, I made a bat stencil. I do, I have a craft club for elementary students. So this, in my craft club, we do all kinds of different holiday crafts and I like to have a lot of things on hand. So they're definitely gonna be doing, they're gonna be sponging the bats for some of their projects, like on their goodie bags and things. So for this one, I did the stencil and lay it over the Whisper White cardstock and I used basic gray ink. Okay, and notice what I'm talking about. Make your stencil big enough so that it protects your card in the background. So when you're sponging, you don't get ink on the side of your card. In fact, I could have made this little, I could have made it a little wider, right? Okay, notice the ink pretty much washes off the basic gray. So that's what's nice about these inks. All right, now, stamping mask. There is this, there's this stamp that I just absolutely love. It's from the, it's a stamp from the Beautiful Day stamp set by Stampin' Up. I'll have a link to my store. If you just have to have this like I did in the description, I'll have a link to my store. So I stamped it, I stamped it, okay? Cut it out with the Brother Scan and Cut. Here's what I cut out. Now, I cut it out with an outline distance of 0 0.04. Now, I cut out, I created a stencil, okay? I created a stencil using the stencil material. And instead of having an outline distance of 0 0.04, I have no outline distance. I need to show you this up close so you see what I'm talking about. Let me line it up. I have glasses on, give me a moment. All right, holding, holding, holding. Here we go. So, here is my stamping mask. It covers everything but the white area. Can you see that? So I was able to take Flirty Flamingo, That's this is Flirty Flamingo, Old olive, my little blends markers, and this, but this is a sponging. I just sponged this whole flower in a snap. I mean, literally, like in a snap. Sponged an entire flower. No coloring, no blends, even coverage on my stamp. And then I just colored in the center with the uh, crushed curry marker, and this is the blends old olive. Okay, now imagine doing like tons of these, like I did for my this little piggy. I mean, I must have made 100 of this little piggies this way. In fact, that was even before I had stencil material and it was my old machine. I made stamping mask out of paper, and then I just used them to color in the little piggy. Now, if you're not visualizing what I'm saying, I'm gonna show you now with a, another, another smaller thing. So last year I was obsessed with this little piggy, and this year I'm obsessed with this little bulldog. He's super, super cute. So I took some of my leftover stencil material, here's the stencil material, and I, I stamped a bunch of bulldogs with the Whisper White cardstock and basic black ink. Then I took my stamping mask, well I didn't color that one in, because actually I'm doing something with the Georgia Bulldog theme and he's actually white, but here's, I did some gray ones using Smoky Slate. And by putting the mask over the dog, I was able to like change my ink coverage. This is a light ink coverage. Then I was able to go a little darker and this is a little bit lighter. So basically you're just, you're just masking off the part you don't want to color. And again, my stamping mask is made with by scanning in my stamped image and cutting it without an outline distance. I will, if you're interested, just put, put it in the comment section because I can do a whole entire tutorial just on stamping mask. And there's a lot more steps because you gotta use scan to cut data, et cetera, et cetera. But that's what you can do with a stamping mask. And this is not just a stamping mask, this is a stencil. And back to what we're doing. This is the back to school theme. I just wanna tell you a couple more things about the back to school theme. So when you make a stencil, let me go back to the machine. As we wrap up, I want to show you a couple more tips. I think we saved this. Be sure to save your projects. Okay, now, when you go to pattern, if you can go to borders here, and you can select, say, for example, the grass. Here it is, there's the grass. Again, I made this for a craft club because I said, hey, this is cool because we can color in, we can make some grass and put some you know, bunnies on it, etc. Okay, then I just enlarged the grass, or I just, uh, not enlarged, I just put a little line. You also get the line out of the border section. So here's my stencil, okay? Here's my stencil, it's some grass. The, the students can draw this. You're trying to teach fine motor skills, again, or homeschooling, or just crafters, you can draw all the grass, you can trace it. However, 
That's not how I did this. I'm using I'm using the the grass as a mask. So what you do is you put that you put the piece you just cut this piece out. So you have your stencil and then you save the reverse. And you lay that on your card. Maybe it was the reverse. It doesn't really matter. Okay, you lay it there and then you sponge. And what you're left with is the reverse. So that's how I did this. Whisper white cardstock lemon lime twist. Okay, so this can also be used to trace grass with and this can be used. So basically you're getting two stencils in one by doing it this way. And all I did to cut, I just cut a line. I just put a line above my grass. It doesn't matter, you could just do it with the, with the cutting board. So, in summary, <laughs> the stencil technique can be used to create educational materials, such as shapes that can then be used to help categorize shapes and fruits and objects, okay? You can, you can use these stencils to trace or to sponge. Okay, and then the students can write the words. You can use them for your bulletin boards or your wall decor. They can be used for stamping masks. They can be used for crafts. Okay, if you, and they, we have all kinds of different things for holidays. You can then have students cut, out, cut them out after tracing them. Again, teaching more fine motor skills. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.